Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Chopper and welcome everybody to another video. Hope you're all having a fantastic day and in this one we're going to be going over the ultimate guide to choosing the best weapons and running the best weapon setups in PUBG. We're going to go over the most typical popular kinds of playstyles that players generally run in this game and then we have an updated guide for every single weapon in PUBG and which guns are going to be the best for that particular playstyle. I wanted to have this video out way earlier but uh, I was busy in the process of moving. That's why it may sound a little more echoing here is because I'm in the new room. I still got to get a couple things figured out and then also also, yesterday was my birthday, so I decided to take some time off, relax a little bit, but now we're back to making videos. So, of course, before we jump into the video, if you guys don't mind sparing a second to drop a like rating, it'd honestly be the best birthday present you could give me. That'd be great. And uh, also, don't forget to subscribe if you're brand new to the channel as well. If you like PUBG, if you like Battle Royale content, this will be the place to be. And one final thing, and this is very important, if you guys enjoy my content or if you enjoy me as a person, please go in the description and check out my second channel. Make sure you're subscribed over there too. There's going to be more content that you won't find on here, so if you you want to keep up to date with all the stuff that I'm posting, go subscribe to that second channel right now. There will be videos up on that as well. But yeah, anyways, all this stuff out of the way, let's jump into the video. So we're going to start with the play style that I would identify mine as closely as, and I bet a lot of you guys will as well. And this is going to be like playing aggressive, still playing as smart as possible, but not staying in one place for too long, seeking out fights when one is over, and generally trying to rack up the most kills per match. And I know for a fact that not all players think like that. In my opinion, my mentality is that like an 11 kill loss would still be better than a two kill win. Now, if you don't share that same mentality, then you just have a different play style. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. But starting with this one, we're going to talk about the optimized weapon setup for playing like that. An AR DMR setup is going to be your go-to. And there's so much variety between these two types of weapons. So how do you figure out which ones will make the best compositions? Now, a lot of this is going to come down to personal preference, but what I'm going to do is make a chart and you can take this how you will. Generally speaking, if you want to play aggressive like this, if you're going to choose to run a bolt action sniper rifle, then you want a 5.5 6 AR. Simple reason for that being 762 is just physically slower than 556. So if you need to single tap people at medium range and you don't have the time to rebolt every single time, especially with like a Carnegie or M24, then you don't want to have to switch to something like a barrel to single tap somebody that might be far away. Those shots are harder to hit than if you were using something like an M4. However, if you're running a DMR such as an SKS, I don't think it's a bad idea to run a 762 AR in combination with it. Now, it was kind of a myth back in the day that you shouldn't run two weapons that run the same ammo type. And when it comes to these, I don't think that this rule should really be followed strictly anymore. It's weird. It's like an old wives tale. It's something that when like this kind of rule came up when people sucked at the game, when the game was very early on, nobody knew how to loot and like manage ammo properly. It's not that big of a deal to run two guns that run the same ammo type because you generally don't run out of bullets in this game if you play your cards correctly. So ideally, my setup would look like a barrel in an SKS or an M4 in a Carnegie 8. With this play style, your goal is pretty much to minimize your weaknesses at every single range. So for example, I really like running the M416 and the K9, the Carnegie 8. And the reason for this is because the M416 is good at close and medium range, and it's actually proficient at that. It can do long range, but not very well, and that's where you have the K9 to supplement in. So there's no range where you have a weakness. And specifically, when you have the barrel and the SKS, you kind of have the same deal going on. What would not be a good idea, something you shouldn't do, is run the barrel plus the M24. That's not a super outstanding idea because that entire middle range is completely vulnerable. The barrel's not very good at single tap that and it's a little bit too close range to use a sniper rifle for so next play style real quick let's talk about the ttv nerds do you have ttv in your name in PUBG? do you take a shower less than twice a month do you make it your mission to kill popular youtubers and streamers so that you can get extra clout if any and all descriptions fit you you might be a ttv nerd and boy we have just the setup for you if you're a ttv'er then the only mission of yours is to hot drop and get as many kills in that hot drop as possible so you can light up the kill feed so more people in your game will look you up. And luckily, being a TTVer doesn't take that long to set up. All you really need is a vector plus micro Uzi and then a secondary shotgun. That's it. You're good to go. I'm just playing around. You know that I'm not messing with people that just like to generally stream on Twitch like normal people. I'm, you know the exact kind of player I'm talking about, the TTV nerds. But anyways, a more serious play style. Let's talk about the passive play style. Now, remember earlier when I was saying that my mentality when I play is that an 11 kill loss is still better than a two kill win. So now we're going to talk about the other side of the coin. If people that would prefer to get the win with less kills rather than have more kills and still lose, right? And honestly, believe it or not, your setup compared to the aggressive playstyle is quite different. Now, what exactly is the passive playstyle? I would define this as somebody who is 
isn't afraid to take fights when necessary, but generally isn't going to go out and hunt for fights or look for them. Will stay away from airdrops for the most part. Likes to play a little bit slower and also values the win over everything. You could get a one kill win and be happy with that game. And if that's your play style, by all means, that makes you happy, then continue to play it. That's cool with me. So an ideal setup for a more passive player, I would say honestly, would be a combination of an SMG and a DMR. Normally, passive players will like to hold down buildings for extended periods of time and just fend them off until they physically have to leave. And so the combination of something like a vector and maybe a mini 14 really allows you to control where and how you take your gunfights. Because if you're in a building and maybe you have a hill to watch or you don't have to leave, that DMR can cover that entire hill. There's not a range you can't handle. And if somebody does happen to make it through and push you, then you have that close range covered as well. It's really about controlling your space if you're playing a more passive play style. And that's a great luxury you have as this kind of player that aggressives do not. You can, for the most part, control how you take those gunfights. But aggressive players can't be weak anywhere because they never know when or where or how somebody's gonna pop up. You can keep this passive play style through pretty much any point in the match, even in the late game. Let's say there's only a few left and you can hold a hill. You don't have to take any peaks you don't want to. You can wait for them to push you or for them to make a move or something and then punish them for it if they make a mistake. That's the epitome of playing passive and one is not necessarily better than the other. It's just down to preference of how you like to play your game. If you're also gonna play passive, it's not so much about your weapon setup that's very important, but also your equipment setup. Nades and, and meds are very important if you're going to be running this. When you're playing passive, staying alive is everything, so you want to exhaust physically every option before you have to risk taking a gunfight that you could lose, so you want to make sure that you have everything stocked up that you might need. So when it comes down to the weapon setup, I would definitely recommend a very strong SMG plus a DMR. In fact, the new PP Bison that's been added to the game, I think is a super strong choice if you're going to be playing passive. It's been added to Erangel and Vikendi. I don't think it's going to be added to the other maps, but if you happen to be playing one of these, consider experimenting with both that weapon, all the other SMGs, and a few DMRs that you like running with it as well. Moving on to another playstyle, let's talk about the full-on camper. There's a very big difference between a passive player and a straight-up camper, and it's important to define those terms so you know exactly how to run each and every playstyle. A camper is normally going to pick a place in the middle of the zone where they think the circle is going to end, so literally dead center of the map most likely. Then from there, they're going to pick a building to post up in for the entirety of the game, and the difference between a passive player and a camper is that when you're being challenged in your building or you're being approached, the passive player will go out to defend it, or at least, you know, within reasonable distance, the camper will stay as far locked in as possible, maybe camp a corner or hide somewhere, wait for that person to come in and try to take them out as cheaply as possible. Campers in the late games are the guys that, you know, are snaking around in the grass, the ones that you hate to run past if you don't see them, typically hiding behind rocks. They'll never shoot unless they're confronted and they need to because they don't want to give away their position and they also value the win typically more than anything. Now, if you're a camper, you want guns that have the fastest kill potential with the least amount of risk involved. So you actually don't want like some of the higher tier assault rifles like an M416 or a barrel or even an AKM. Typically, as a camper, you'd want an LMG or a shotgun or a vector. And honestly, you might be best taking a combination of any one of those. You definitely don't want a snipe rifle because snipers, in order to get kills, you have to risk peeking and it's too risky to challenge like that. Now, I gotta say this. I really don't condone hardcore camping. Obviously, people can play however they want to play, but I also think that to a certain degree, you make the game less fun for yourself and other players. I see playstyles as kind of on a spectrum, right? You have very hardcore camping on one end and very aggressive, just reckless playing on the other end. I don't advise you to have any of these two extremes in your playstyle. If you fall anywhere in the middle of the spectrum, you'll probably be okay. Now, the next playstyle I want to talk about is certainly not as popular as some of these other ones that we've been discussing, but nonetheless, it's still really effective. And I'm going to consider this, I suppose, the scout class. I consider this playstyle as the person that likes to hold down like a power position, such as a hill or a really elevated building, and typically has suppressed weapons, likes to clear out areas very stealthily and then move on to another power position. And this is very different from the other playstyles because the scout doesn't hunt for kills per se, but also doesn't shy away from gunfights. The only issue with the scout playstyle is that you're not going to be able to loot quite as much as you'd like to because you're going to be taking your enemies out either farther away or in larger groups. And for this playstyle, I'm going to recommend a suppressed AR, a suppressed sniper rifle if possible. And also, this is the only class I'm going to recommend this to you, but hold on to your pistol. The only issue with the scout playstyle is that depending on the weapons, you can run out of ammo quite quickly and it's hard to replace it. So if you hold on to your pistol, you might have that thing you need just to pick up that last kill so that you can go ahead and like loot out of desperation pretty much. If you like, if you want to play the scout, you can even substitute one of those weapons for a crossbow. It's not that bad. The great thing about it is that you can fire pretty much as 
many shots as you want at someone if they don't spot you, and it's impossible to tell where it's coming from. I'm telling you, you can do some absolutely nasty things with this combination. If you play this playstyle right, if you run it correctly, any of these playstyles can be very dangerous and effective, either for getting kills or getting wins. It just comes down to preference. And I want you guys to let me know in the comments if there is any playstyle that I missed that you maybe want me to cover and recommend a setup for it. And I'd be more than happy to make a follow up or a part two to this video. And also, really quick, I need you guys to stick around for one second. I need to have a serious talk with you guys about the content coming up on this channel. So during the time that I've posted PUBG, we've been pretty happy doing top 10s and ranking videos and all that stuff is great and I can continue to keep doing that if that's what you guys like to see. But I've covered almost all of the like good topics to do on this game unless you know when new content comes out, I can switch it up and stuff like that. But while I'm still happy to keep doing these top 10s and rankings for sure, I also want to throw in a little bit more into the mix, do some new things, maybe try some more gameplay oriented videos if you guys want to see that. Maybe stream a bit more because I do plan on doing that since I moved in now. I want to make videos with maybe some other people. That'd be great. Let me know who you'd like me to make videos with and uh, maybe what games you'd like to see that on, whatever it is. If you want to see a more variety of games instead of just PUBG, which is still going to be the main thing on here, then like I said, at the beginning of the video, go subscribe to that second channel. I'm going to be doing like a bunch of cool stuff over there. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about for this channel. If you want to see more like rankings, top 10s, if you want to see gameplay oriented stuff, if you want me to stream more on here, whatever it is, please do let me know down inside the comment section. But anyways, guys, that's going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Those will both be linked down below in the description. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're brand new, and I'll see you all on the next stream or the next video. Have a good one and peace out.